Hi, my name is Sean and I'm here at Medieval Collectibles and I'm here to talk to you about a sword today. This sword in particular. This is our Black Prince sword as made by Legacy Arms. It is a recreation of a 14th century hand and a half sword and it is based on the blade that hung over Edward of Woodstock's tomb at Canterbury Cathedral. It hung there from about 1376 until about the 1650s when it was said to have went missing. Now Edward of Woodstock was a famous war leader who led the English during the early years of the Hundred Years' War. He's also known as the Black Prince. He earned this nickname after his English victory at the Battle of Cressy. He was thought to have earned the nickname not only for his reputation in the field of battle, but also for the black armor that he wore during the battle. Now enough about history. Let's talk about what makes this sword really special. First, we'll start with the materials. This sword is made from 5160 carbon steel. Now, if you're not familiar with steel, you may be asking, what does that mean? Well, 5160 carbon steel is very similar to 1060 carbon steel, with the exception that it has chromium added. Chromium adds durability to the blade. In fact, 5160 is very well loved by knife makers and swordsmiths the world over for the toughness it contributes to the sword. This sword is also perhaps one of the most well-known types of Oakshot 15A, the type that's well known for its exceedingly sharp, acute profile taper. As you can see, the blade narrows very sharply to a fine point. It also has a distal taper. Now, distal taper means that as the sword progresses from the hilt to the point, the blade gets progressively thinner as well. That helps add balance and responsiveness to the sword when it's being wielded. This sword is fully functional. It's designed for use. It has a very sharp edge, and it's hand-tempered. The handle is made from wood, wrapped in leather, and it features these nice little ridges that really aid you in getting a good solid grip whenever you're holding the blade. The guard and pommel are both blackened. A fun fact about that is that the original sword also features blackened pommel and guard. Now these weren't original features to the weapon, they were originally just traditional steel, but the owner, when it was discovered, decided he wasn't a fan of the condition the grip was in or in the condition that the pommel and guard were in. So he had them blackened when he had the grip replaced. The pommel is a traditional wheel shape, as you can see here by the roundness. It has an engraved cross on both sides, and the full-length tang is also peened for durability. Now that we've gotten some of the more basics about the sword and its construction out of the way, let's talk about how it handles, how it feels in the hand. It's not too heavy, fits very nicely in the hand, and it indexes very well. Now if you've never handled a blade before, you may be asking, what does indexing mean? Indexing means that whenever I put my fingers and my hands around the sword, I can close my eyes and I can tell where the cutting edge is just by the way it sits in my hand. That is due mostly to the oval shape of the grip. The sword's point of balance rests somewhere around about two inches from the guard, right about there. And its point of percussion is about 22 inches from the guard. Now you may be asking, what is point of percussion? Point of percussion is generally regarded as, if you'll forgive the term, the sweet spot, where you want to hit whenever you're swinging the sword. It's the point at which the sword vibrates the least on impact. As a demonstration, I hit here. See how the sword wobbles? Versus, it has far less wobble whenever you strike it on the point of percussion. That ensures strength on every impact and ensures that the blade connects and evenly cleaves through whatever you're swinging at. This sword also includes a scabbard. The scabbard is made from wood with a black leather wrapping and it features solid steel fittings at both the throat and at the tip. Now that we've talked about the basics of the sword, giving you some background on it, let's get to the really fun stuff. We hope we've been able to further your education about blades, particularly about this, our Black Prince sword from Legacy Arms, about its history as well as its construction. Appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.